Welcome to the Wise Build Bridges, a podcast brought to you by Viaduct Generation. On today's episode, I am joined by our very own Harriet Mercer. Was it? Do you know what? I've realised I've introduced you. I've never given surnames, but I will. Really? It flows really naturally. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. I'm a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. I'm really excited about today. I think it's going to be a good. <laughs> a good combo, get people to love you as much as we love you. Um, so yeah, for people that don't know Harriet, I'm going to give it a little intro. Um, so Harriet started her career in academia and education as a researcher and teacher. Um, fun fact, she's a specialist in 18th century lyric poetry, and we will be getting into it today. <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether that's interesting to anyone else, but I like it. Will it. Be. it will be. We'll find a really niche audience. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's not interesting. <laughs> exactly. Um, so you first joined VG as a freelance writer yeah. whilst you were still at uni in Oxford. You've had a few roles yeah. here. We'll also get into that, um, which includes like a content role writer, strategist, manager, all of it. Um, <laughs> and then also, and now you are our project manager, um, Indeed. which is a is a whole other ball <laughs> game, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like there's been deep depths of SEO. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, sort of got started, and it was you know like oh content. Like, I'm yeah. familiar with this. Yeah. Like this, you know, makes sense. And then it was you know moving into project <laughs> management. It's like oh, Ooh, this is new. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I was saying in a call the other day. I was like, I'm fluent in developer now. Oh, I love. Like, it. I'm quite jealous. Oh, that's, thank you. That's the you speak. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really important, right? Because yeah. it's like um, when they start talking tech, I'm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, no. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then they can confuse you as well. Like they see your face and you're just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, like I, I can hold my own in a technical conversation. Yeah, for sure. But like, you know, once it, I'm they just like, okay, it. yeah, it's just <laughs> kind of like, hey, I don't need to know the ins and outs. I don't yeah. need to know what bloody, like, yeah, just, just give me a timeline. <laughs> give me a timeline, give me a day. Can you do this? Like, <laughs> can you do this for me? Yes or no? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's an interesting development. <laughs> yeah, and we are definitely going to be getting into it. But I kind of want to start actually to talk about like Harriet Pre VG, get yeah. back to your roots, oh, wow. let the people, you know, get to really know you. <laughs> So here you are, how you came to us in the first place. Yeah. Um, you are a proud Northern girl. Like uh-huh. you really re- you're rep, you're rep <laughs> for the North. Which yeah, I, love, like, I, love. <laughs> I feel like it's a solid forty yeah. percent of my personality. <laughs> I can't lie. <laughs> like every single time I'm like, oh, it's because I'm from the North. <laughs> the North. <laughs> it's, like, it's like real game of thrones. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, and like you'll also like like even like yesterday in the office, like you'll just be like you're quipping a little thing it's like that's a northern thing like, absolutely that's a northern thing oh. like, we can't join in on this because yeah. We're out. <laughs> you know i was saying this to danny a while ago like i just kept on being like oh danny i'm really sorry i've like, been mithering you all day and he was yeah. like you know what for the first like 10 months that we were working together i had no idea what that meant and it just like means like bothering you right. i really didn't think that this was a thing mothering I, like mothering mothering yeah oh, that's new for me oh wow well yeah, you know it's learning <laughs> exactly constantly learning <laughs> <laughs> um okay nice i love that um so yeah so you're from the north of england tell us a little bit kind of about like your uni journey you obviously you went to uni in new york yeah so you very much stayed up north yeah for that <laughs> how was that do you was it, i mean it was obviously something that you loved because you kind of got really got into it yeah 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 so um i'm from bolton originally um i have like a, a weird accent i feel like it is quite bolton as soon as i say that i'm from there people are like okay and do you also have it yeah and you also have it like as soon as you're with other northerners it yeah gets oh my god like, yes you're actually giving us like a bit of like a diluted version yeah yeah so I'm subconsciously i dilute it yeah and it's like it's only as soon as i start mm. talking about um you know about the north <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's green. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, no. As soon as I got on the phone to like my mum, mm. my brothers, you know, my friends, it's just like it just turns up. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. So I'm from Bolton, uh, which is in Lancashire, and then um, I went to York, mm. um, York St John, which I absolutely adored. Um, and every time I would sort of go over, like if my mum was, you know, feeling gracious and she would yeah. drive me over to uni oh, rather than yes. having to get the four different, not four trains, but it feels like four yeah. trains to get yeah. across the Pennines. Every single time I cross over from Lancashire to Yorkshire, I should be like, traitor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. I get the feeling of the straw. Yeah, yeah, War of the Roses, like 600 yeah. years ago now, but yeah. here we are. Um, yeah, so went to York St. John, absolutely adored it. Mm. Um, it was the perfect uni for me. Um, yeah. I really didn't know whether I even wanted to go to uni, okay. uh, which is rogue thinking about it now. Yeah. Um, you know, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Um, and then I remember I went Christmas shopping with my mum in York. Love and it. I was like, I just- Inspirational story. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I was just like, I, I just love it here. It's yes. so old, it's so quaint, it's small. You can literally walk around the city centre in like 15 minutes. Yeah. Like, tiny it's pedestrianized and I just fell in love with it and I was nice. like okay I don't care what I study but I'm going to I don't know that I want to be here yeah I'm Incredible. going to your whether it's uni of or your St. John yeah absolutely flopped in my AS levels oh, which no. was like my I mean, first year yeah. yeah I mean those I feel like those are they are they're so hard yeah <laughs> they're actually so hard like I felt like the drunk in the CSE and I don't know if it's still the case now yeah. Horrific. I mean, it feels like uh, a horrific. lifetime ago, honestly. Yeah. But um yeah, I absolutely flopped and that's had to reset a lot. So okay. uni of were like we're not accepting you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but why is Jay yeah, no <laughs> why is Jay gave me an unconditional offer? Um, which is amazing. Yeah. Um I later realised that they were dishing them out like candy because um, they just you have an unconditional you have an unconditional I was there thinking like I'm so special. <laughs> I have made it. Yeah, no, I got there and everyone's like, did you get an unconditional as well? It's like well, yeah. they just wanted all of you really to yeah, do that. Yeah, so, exactly. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> I think that really helped me because the pressure off going into A levels meant that I, I actually achieved way way higher I just I don't really do well in tests like timed right. situations yeah. which is ironic now see this is my entire <laughs> job is time management but well, it's all about growth yeah it's yeah it's about character development. <laughs> yeah um but yeah no so um yeah I went to York St John in the end mm -hmm. um and it was the best place for me they it was such a tiny uni there was literally six thousand students like wow. tiny, that tiny is uni. small, yeah. So you knew everyone. You'd walk yes. through campus and you'd be like, "That's so nice." It feels like you're living in a film, doesn't it? Yeah, and like you're walking through campus. And like, <laughs> I know this person. I know this person. Yeah, exactly. I'm the main character. Yeah. Strong main character. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I mean that's it's kind of why Australia was the reason why I wanted to get into academia because they were just so supportive. Um, that's they so were good. The, best best tutors ever the literature department yeah were just wonderful i did um english literature as my undergrad and okay. then 18th century as my master's yes <clears throat> and um so i actually really the reason why i got into the 18th century was because i picked a module and that it was 19th century literature but i like i no i tell like let me start like that let's go Scratch <laughs> <clears throat> so I picked the module and it was like 18th century literature right. and I remember I picked my modules really last minute because right. I, you know I was uh, traveling abroad that summer mm. I was just like shit I need to pick something yeah. um, and um, it ended up I walked in there and 18th century and not that I'd even registered this at the time was obviously the 1700s and right. I was like oh okay. shit so like yeah, I wanted yeah, to do yeah. Victorian <laughs> so I was like I see yeah that is what a is this? model isn't it but it makes sense the logic of it makes sense right like, yeah but yeah but yeah I ended up adoring it um and I think what really sort of interests me about it is that it's so overlooked it was an yeah. area of history that I had no idea about yes. you know as as you know like the English and um, not English the history curriculum yeah um, in the UK it's like you know what Henry VIII, yeah, Tudors, yeah, <laughs> um, Victorian, yeah. We, we didn't even do a lot of Victorians oh, really? in my school. Yeah, not really. really. I, I remember like we dressed up. 
Is it Victorian? Stop it. Yeah, we did. We did. We got game one year two. No. Yeah, we fully had like a day where they brought in like blackboards, they had sketching, they had, yeah. They would like pretend to like be like town of the dead to like naughty. Like, they just, oh, really? They were like, like, they're like, we're going to strip because we're Victorian. Yeah. <laughs> it's really interesting looking yeah. at like well, how Victorians are portrayed now. Mm. Um, because they, they really were like yeah. relatively they were quite liberal yeah um you know it was because you learn about it a lot through like oliver twist and like yeah. workhouses and yeah 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 so you learn this really like about the like abject gritty. poverty yeah, and yeah. The it's like the industrial yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> 100%, yeah yeah um so yeah i got in there um and the 18th century was just something that i had no idea about yes. and it turns out um sort of you know researching further into it the area that i ended up specializing in is called the long 18th century so okay. it goes from 1660 to 1830 okay which yeah. sounds rogue uh, but it's from the restoration of the monarchy which was second all the way through to the ascension of queen victoria okay it goes from essentially rebuilding britain after the english civil war Okay. And, um, essentially goes from um, one of my, well, I mean, the best lecturer I've ever had. He's called um, Adam James Smith. Big up if you watch it, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> he's an absolute legend and he convened a module. Um, I'm very jealous I never got to take it, but it's called Civil War to Civil Society, which is okay. sort of like the 17th century, um, which I think sort of sums up why the 18th century is so interesting. Okay. Because it goes from a real time of like upheaval to, mm. you know, civil society, yes. modern, polite yes. society. And it's where, you know, my interest really lies in the fact that it's where our society starts to become recognizable. Right, it goes okay. from being, you know, a very feudal system to being more mm. democratic. Yeah. Um, and not that it was, you know, you still had, you know, your, your lords and your aristocracy yes. and all yes. of that, but it's, you know, relatively a lot more yeah. democratic and the middle classes start to, you know, become an actual, you know, thing. thing. It's not yeah. just like, you know, aristocracy and poor people. Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, that's, sorry. I, the minute that you get me talking about no, the you know what? I love century. it. You, you made me a convert. It sounds really <laughs> interesting. No, because it's like, it's essentially, it's very sociological, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah, from yeah, From yeah. that sense, you know, of just like really understanding how we behave and how we conduct ourselves as yeah. a society and yeah. where that comes from. Because for sure, we weren't always, you know, what's the word? Not like necessarily raised, but like, do you know what I mean? We, we, we didn't always interact in these ways. Like, yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, This is yeah. not how humans started. Yeah. <laughs> you know? it's, it's we didn't always like, have like a system of like, everyone goes to school. And, you yeah, know, like, yeah, have yeah, exactly, of that. Exactly. And the building of that, I can see how that can be interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, I, I think that's really important because it's like, um, I think with anything with literature, with history, you know, it's really important to understand the culture yeah. and, you know, the context, you know, with anything, context is key, you know, because if, if I'm, it's, I feel like the point of literature is that it's a cultural product and yeah. anything that you do will be intrinsically influenced by everything that you see every day. Absolutely. Like, you know, the language that you use, is gonna depend on who you surround yourself like yeah. we were saying earlier. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah yeah no 100 it's that yeah. it's you know it's it's so important even sort of like subliminal things that you yeah. wouldn't even think of like any sort of in my opinion um any sort of piece of music you know piece of art book poem anything mm. movie whatever it is will be influenced by your culture and how you raise it so I think that it's such an important thing. And yeah, it's a great insight, about, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a really great insight. Uh, yeah. It's always, yeah, I, I do always love thinking of like how did, like thinking processes must have been so different as well, like the way that like the perspective yeah. that people have. Been, <laughs> yeah. It's like, how did you get to that conclusion? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like you can understand things so differently. Yeah. Like, that's for sure according to the context that you're in. Yeah, and it's it's really interesting because um like I can't remember who it was, but mm. I remember reading it's sort of like a passage from a letter or a diary entry or whatever it was, and it was the first time right. that um this person in it must have been the sort of nineteenth century yeah. got on a train. 
And the first okay. ever time, so the first train in the UK that was a um, public railway was between Manchester and Liverpool. Okay. So it was like trade route. Right. Um, and it was a diary entry of someone getting on a train and thinking, like, just becoming more and more acutely aware of their mortality. Okay. Because they could just see the world going by them. Flashing by. It's and like a... something they've never seen before. Yeah. Oh, my God, that's fascinating. Yeah, because I guess it's a different way of seeing time. Yeah. Almost. Yeah, I guess it's like, you know, you like, first time you go on a really fast roller coaster, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, my God. And then, like... That is true. Oh, my God, yeah. when you put it in that context. Yeah. For sure, like, when you're on the roller coaster, you're very aware of your yeah. mortality. <laughs> 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 you're like, oh, my God, is that really... Like, do I have to do this? Yeah. Like, is this really the option I want to Take. Yeah, but yeah, no, for sure, it must have been like the first time that they felt that speed. Yeah, just, that yeah. is. Yeah, we've gone on such a tangent. Yeah. So Let's sorry. do it. This is all about 18th century. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, Fabio, he's not too fast. <laughs> what about okay? So, what was it about then poetry specifically that like drew you in? Because I know that. Poetry, I think, can be quite a hard medium for people to really like get into mm -hmm. and embrace. Yeah. And I think I I know for like the only reason I kind of enjoy poetry doing like doing English uh, lit GCSE was because I did have someone who was kind of breaking it down. And once I had the mm -hmm. breakdown, I was like, this is fantastic. I yeah. love it. Like yeah. annotating those anthologies so much fun I'm yeah really really into it right yeah but before that I just I just find it so difficult to kind of truly understand and yeah so like what what got you into it I'm not gonna lie it's because they were shorter fair <laughs> no no no, no, no. <laughs> and I'm on, and so honest. bad uh, yeah. like because at uni I had to read two books a week so if I could read a 100 line yeah. poem and like oh, understand it sorted sure. like so For much sure. so much easier yeah. and obviously i did some of my reading <laughs> <laughs> but like i i couldn't physically read that much yeah. so like yeah. the reason why i got into it purely was because i've always been you know that first sort of you know gcfe or a level yeah. lesson when you're going through a poem and i would always get told off because i jumped to the last thing and jumped right. to like the symbolic okay. meaning straight away okay without yeah. actually sort of it takes a real long time to sort of read a piece of poetry and see it for what it is not right. for what it could mean yes because i think because yeah. you always jump to that right it's yeah. always a metaphor it's always it's yeah. not what it purely is on the page yeah yeah exactly which is great and yeah. it's so interesting that some you know an inanimate piece of paper can yes. do that to you can make spark those thoughts yeah. but i think what is actually quite a skill is having to be like okay so this is the poetic persona this is what they're doing this yeah. is what they're seeing this is the scene that they're in this is what they're doing yes. um and then sort of going from there and then like okay so within the context that that was written you know they you know for example 18th century poets, um, especially sort of lower class poets, um, like to rely on Greek myth and okay. things like that because they were such well known stories. Um, well, not well well known stories, there was definitely a degree of education yeah. there. Um, but, you know, it's they use these things because it was what they knew, which they could you know yes yeah yeah no, absolutely, absolutely yeah so they would add in those those bits mm -hmm. and, you know those, yeah. those illusions but um it's yeah it, it's interesting like actually breaking it down once you get into poetry like it even that first time i read a poem and i'm like what the fuck yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah i don't know whether i can yeah. swear on this podcast you can, you can. all right okay, cool. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, first time I read a poem, even now I'm like, I have no fucking clue yeah. what that says. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I have to read it about three or four times. And then, you know, you feel like you're unlocking doors sure. um, as you sort of go and through that part must be quite exciting. So, so exciting yeah. and so interesting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. yeah so I'm just going to interrupt this. Go for it, go for it. <laughs> but it's also like, I think the added kind of, I think complicated bit about the poems that you look at is that a yeah. lot of it's in like old. English. like are you saying it, it, yeah. it honestly felt like I was reading a foreign language like how was that for you to kind of 
because obviously now I imagine you're fluent in it. Like, <laughs> what was that journey into fluency? Like, was it, it, is it just a case of like, just get used to it and the repetition of it, you know, you, yeah. see, you see the same words prop up, you kind of get a vibe. Like. Yeah, yeah, it's um, a bit both. Um, you know, the first couple of times you, you read it, you do just, so sort of get used to the yeah. language. I guess the it's language a bit like Shakespeare. Yeah, as well, you know, it's you know using like whence and yes. you know things like that, and you know wherefore and yeah. Do you ever slip that into your modern day language? Just oh my god, when I do, I sound like the most common <laughs> article ever. Like it sometimes works out. Like, if I've been studying and like I'll you know chuck a thus and stuff, yeah. and, like, people look at me like, are you okay? <laughs> honestly yeah. it's the worst thing um yeah but yeah no um it's it's just kind of something that you get used to i guess but um something that there are bits you have to learn like in yes. the 18th century some just like random s's yeah. end up as so it's called the, like the long f okay. so um like just imagine almost like um almost like a treble clef okay yeah um it looks like that and that's in placement s so oh, it looks like an f so like you know wise would look like wife oh my god that's so baffling yeah so then you know the first couple of times yeah. you're, you're sort of reading something and you'll be like oh well it's a i can do a feminist reading on this because it says wife and you're like oh, oh no, shit no, i actually can't yeah it's back to the drama yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nothing to do with that yeah okay yeah. nice okay perfect yeah. sorry i went on there no, it's, it's it's all about you know getting to know you and yeah. you know in, in 18th century poetry is your passion. We will go there. Thanks. We have got that. <laughs> um, obviously, you mentioned. Well, I also mentioned in your intro that you joined us whilst you were doing your masters. Yeah, and this is an ongoing thing. Yeah, <laughs> tell me about juggling the two because obviously there's yeah. been times when you've kind of had to take a pause mm -hmm. or like last year you kind of you did the opposite where you took a yeah. course from bg a bit or you yeah. really scaled your hours back yeah what's what has that been like mm -hmm. yeah the the masters is the <laughs> masters that never ends honestly it's a running joke now yeah, like every time i get on the phone to my mum she's like i've finished it yet yeah like, no <laughs> you know it's been four years mum yeah like, yeah um but yeah it's it's really one of those things. I thought I would have my master's done by the time I was 21. Like, right. you know, I yeah. mean, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really one of those things that I, it used to really bother me. Now oh, it yeah, doesn't no. so much because it's like, it's I not mean, great. Yeah. And also, I guess it's for yourself. You yeah. get to really indulge in like the research aspect of it yeah. and like yeah. just get into it. And I guess, you know, it's a nice hobby to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It's good to follow your passion. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, it's um it's hard but i can't yeah. lie it's you know on a on a saturday morning like i've been quite good with my routine lately um yeah. you know get up go to the library you know or coffee shop depending yeah. on which one it is yeah, <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah. usually it's a coffee shop because in the library they don't let you bring yeah, in near the food, books. yeah 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 um so yeah usually i'll hang out in there you know write a bit yeah it's not what I want to do on a Saturday. Like, I, I that's dedication. Too. That is true commitment. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I could do it. Yeah, it's well, especially because Harry works ridiculously hard during the week. Like we are meant to finish at six pm. You will receive an email after six pm from yeah. Harry. Yeah. Um, and you know, I mean, it is a pretty busy time at the moment as well. And yeah. you are also currently filling in for two people. Yeah. So it's like. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's it's all Uncle Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. that? I always think about that. It's like, you know that bit in Spider Man where he's yeah. like, the boat's cut in half and he's trying to like hold mm. the two halves? Yeah, that's me. That's me like, <laughs> every day. <laughs> yeah, no, but then I, I think it's, it's all the more incredible and I think it speaks to a lot of who you are as a person for you to also be doing the masters and getting <laughs> up on the Saturday morning yeah. to do that because yeah. it's not being you can sleep. It's, it's long, I can't yeah. lie. I do also think it's one of those situations when you when you're in it, then you're in it. Like yeah. it is what you're doing. Like I think I mean before I joined BG full time, mm -hmm. I was also 
I was doing BT part time with a full time job. Yeah. And then I was also doing the Saturday morning shift. Yeah. Like the Sunday <laughs> afternoon. Or yeah. like whenever you have a free hour, you're just like, okay, I um, guess I'm going to have to spend it on this. Yeah, exactly. And you're just in it because you kind of you accept. I think also because you, you know it's a temporary state. Like, yeah. yeah. Obviously, in the moment, sometimes you're just there, like, no. Why? <laughs> like, yeah, like, why did I say yes to this? Yeah. Like, was yeah. I mad? Yeah. Uh, did I have a moment? But at the same time, it's, yeah, you just kind of get through it and you just, yeah. and you, yeah, and you, you make it work. Yeah. You make it work. Exactly. And there are times, you know, you'll look back and you'll be like, well, that was crazy. <laughs> but yeah. I did it. And yeah. you, you see what you're capable of, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly, and I think it's like if you're dedicated to something, you'll you'll just you'll just do it. Like yeah. at, at the end of the day, and it's yeah, there are going to be those days where you're stressed out your head, your yeah. skin's got bad because you're stressed out, <laughs> and you just have eaten yeah. everything in the cupboard. Yes, <laughs> but like that's that's just part just of part it. Of it. Like 100%. you know, if if you really want something so badly, there there aren't any shortcuts. You do yes. just have to graft and get it done because no one's going to do it for you yeah. like i'm not gonna turn around and like chat gpt's written my dissertation for me you know what i mean absolutely like it's you know you just need to do it it's, yeah it's you part know. of it yeah it's part of it i would say there's a bit like um i can't remember what you know I just hate saying, oh, I heard it on a podcast. She said, no, it's while she was recording a We're podcast. We're on a podcast. Like. <laughs> but uh, I can't remember where it was. Yeah. It was probably someone much more, you know, put together than me. <laughs> um, but they said there are two modes of work, and there's heads down and heads up. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, heads up is a time where you're thinking, you know, what's the next step? What's the goal? Sure. What's the vision? What's right. the end point? Yes. And um, heads down is when you're grafted and you're doing the work. You know, if you are too spend too much time sort of heads down, you might not, you know, be doing the most optimal work. You might just be working hard, not working smart. Sure. But if you spend too much time heads up, then you Yeah, no, you're just dreaming. Like, yeah. you're not doing you're anything. You're in fantasy land. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's like, well, striking the balance between those is really hard. Sure. And I think I spent a lot of time in that sort of heads up bit, being like, oh, I'm going to finish my master's. I'm yeah. going to do this. I'm going to do that. And not having real like a like a real plan right um i think that was when i was first starting it and mm. sort of throughout the masters obviously i've got older yeah. <laughs> I, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. i think you know you mature so much in those years so much plans change as well yeah. like i think you become so much more aware of what else is out there yeah. and like what i get it sounds cheesy but what the world has to offer yeah like, yeah 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 everything I feel like everything that I've kind of done since leaving uni aside from like I guess like the traveling bits or whatever mm -hmm. those bits I don't I haven't really known about what they are if that makes sense like the roles that I've ended up in mm -hmm. I haven't I I never was like oh, I'm gonna do this you yeah, know, I've yeah, just, yeah yeah it's kind of just happened and fallen into place not yeah. to say that it's just come like this yeah like what the work has to go behind it yeah. you know you need to have the right set of skills or whatever it is but because i i guess i've been open to that flexibility of, of being like I'll, I'll go for whatever the best option is for me at that time rather than me having planned it five years ago and been like this is exactly yeah. where i'll be yeah you know? and when you have those like big five-year plans mm. i hate that question when they're like oh what's your five-year plan if you're if you have this five year plan, every single decision that you're gonna make, you're gonna fuck about so much more. Yes. Because there's so much more riding on it. Yes. There's so much more pressure. You just, yeah, yeah, that decision making then becomes so and then I think you're bound to be disappointed. Yeah. I'm exactly. not gonna lie, because yeah. a lot of the time it will change and it doesn't mean it's a change for the bad for the bad, the worst. For the worst. It's not a yeah. bad change. It's not necessarily yeah. I mean, it's not necessarily yeah. something negative. Yeah change is not a negative thing in exactly, so, exactly so yeah to be to be able to be open to that and to not feel like you've like let yourself down because it's not exactly where you, you had said you would be yeah yeah exactly and I so I suppose sort of making that shift you know I thought I wanted to be a lecturer and you know yeah. that was that was my career goal you know I was like I'm going to get my PhD by the time mm. I'm 30 you know I'm going to have done this going to have done that and at the end of the day, like when you're in it, you know, I I saw my career path, um, you know, to try and be a lecturer, yeah. and I saw, you know, it's it's the reason why a lot of the lecturers are striking at the minute, yeah. Um, 
and it's you know it's shit because you know these people have worked so hard they've studied for so long and they're on in you know unstable contracts you know it's a nightmare to get into yeah and a post only really comes up when eight-year-old honorary professors died you know yes. what i mean yeah. like yeah it's so it's, yeah. it's impossible to get into and i saw you know that path and i was like you know i'm gonna have a decade of having no money like you know being really dissatisfied and frustrated not being able to yeah. get into it you know my entire masters has been pretty much like disrupted by the strikes and yeah yeah it's frustrating for me as a student but like it's frustrating for you know the yeah, lecturers sure. more so because yeah. it's like why should you not be able to get a mortgage because yes. you, sorry i'm going on such a tangent it's fine but it's fine at, it. <laughs> at the end of the day it's um i think basically making that shift yes. so going back to what we were talking about before making that shift from you know this is academia i'm gonna yeah. you know stay in this forever this is what i'm gonna do and you know i was warned so many times don't get yourself on the conveyor belt don't just okay. keep on going and just keep on studying and you know getting wrapped up in the, right. in the sort of institution of yes. academia and i was like no 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 that's not me this is my dream and I think yeah. everyone says that um but then sort of moving into marketing there was that point where i was like is this the right decision you know yeah, of is course, this of is this what i want to do yeah. um and i think that there will be that point in anyone's career you know uh, especially with an english degree it's so multidisciplinary absolutely so you know you can find yourself in anything yeah. like you know friends of mine are you know a lot of us work in marketing mm -hmm. a lot of teachers um some people i know who are on my course are now you know lawyers yes vets, like hr people you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's like making that choice is hard but it's always you know you just got to assess the it's current cool. situation you're in is it a good decision is it going to put your career on the right steps yeah. like what is you know does this make sense right now does it will it make sense in two three years time yeah. yes or no yeah and absolutely yeah i think that's all you can do for sure and also i feel like there's i do feel like we're also living in a time where there is so much more flexibility around choosing a career path like all because you've made a decision and you've said for example now you've committed to marketing yeah it doesn't mean that market it that's it like yeah. you are now in marketing yeah for life. like exactly do you know what i mean you yeah. still have so much opportunity to yeah. say well, I've got all of these skills here that yeah. I can now apply to this situation. Or yeah. in this, maybe I want to pivot a little bit and I want to yeah. go down this. Obviously, it's hard having to feel like you're kind of going from zero again. Yeah, of course. But yeah. I, I do I do think we can get really caught up in like mm. being like, this is it, like this is gonna be the decision. Yeah. That I, you know I think that's what sort of education you know gears is up to it's like you know i mean 100%. this is you know you choose your a level subjects at age 16 so yes. you can only go down these three career paths and then you've got to choose your one career path at 18 yeah. and you can't yeah it's, uh, it's the biggest sort of bullshit ever yeah. like you know you can yeah. choose whatever you want you can pivot you can change lens you know yeah, yeah you you know if i you know project manager now if i wanted to go into i don't know tech I guess we kind yeah. of already are there. Yeah, like, like if yeah, I, yeah, I don't know, yeah. maybe if I wanted to be like a rock climb instructor or something, I'm gonna still gonna have to be a like a newbie yes. there. You know yeah, what I mean? Like absolutely. it's not like you can just like shift from one thing to another. No. Um, but I don't know why that was the first example that popped into my head. <laughs> like I'm a rock climber. <laughs> no, with these nails. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's um yeah. I just I just think it's it's fine. You 100%. Can, you can Do you know what's it. quite funny is that it has this conversation has naturally become a recurring theme on the podcast. Oh really? I'm talking about how essentially education is failing us <laughs> and like <laughs> this setup is wrong because it's yeah. true that it's even because it yeah sure we we made those students at 16 for our A levels but before that at 14 you're deciding on your GCSEs mm. which also dictate what A-levels you can do so yeah. really from the age of 13 14 yeah you're having to think what do I want to do yeah in and I think in a space where you have no idea how many jobs there are out there like mm. I'm pretty like do you mean half of the titles half the people I've come across I remember the first workplace I was in I was like what is this job 
what do you do? What is your day to day? <laughs> yeah. I've never heard of these titles before. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. had I known this was an option, maybe I would have made some really different decisions yeah. 10 years yeah, before exactly. that, you know? Exactly. So like that, I think that part is always interesting and, and a lot of it is, you know, being exposed to to different environments, different mm-hmm. people. I think uni for me, that was one of the really strong perks was mm-hmm. that you had people not only from all walks of life, but I'm not gonna lie, there are a lot of very privileged people that go to uni. Yeah, of course. And they then their network, their view of the world sometimes is so much bigger because they've mm-hmm. had access to so many more things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so then, you know, when you've got someone where like I was really proud I'd got myself like an in a Christmas internship at like this consulting firm in London. And then I'm hearing that my course mate is going to Dubai for two weeks of work in fashion. I was like, what? <laughs> like I thought I was doing okay. And I thought I'd I backed up my C V. Yeah. Then you're doing that, but that's it's just because she she, she saw that as a possibility. Like for me, it never would have crossed my mind. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. so the more you're exposed to these different things and mm. it's doing, the more you, yeah, essentially the more options you then get. Like, yeah, yeah, of course. But yeah, that's no, it. Right. <laughs> it is, you know, I, but, think it's, I think it's fair enough. And like, it's kind of draws back into what we were saying earlier about, you know, your culture and where you grew up and what you yeah. do. So influencing yes. every choice that you make. Absolutely. Because like, I never thought I was going to live in London. Like mm. my mum hates London with a burning passion. <laughs> like literally even now when I call her, she's just like, um, have you mopped your floor? Because uh, London's dirty. Oh, and uh, yeah, genuinely, like, because, like, is, you know, does she like, do you like if you like your accent changes? Oh my God, like yeah. It, or anything <laughs> yeah. Like that. yeah, it was worse when I lived in Oxford. Right. Because uh, I was um, I was working at a boarding school. Um, right. I didn't go to boarding school. I didn't go to no. private school. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was calling myself a state school Sally, <laughs> which is, you know, it's, it's so stupid because I feel like it's, the minute that anyone's like, oh, I went to normal school, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, sure. Like, no, <laughs> Sorry, I mean, right? Yeah, no, yeah. no, no, like, everyone's, yeah. like, just trying to, like, out-pover each other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, don't that. <laughs> no, but, you know, that is a huge thing at uni. It is. It's, it's a huge thing at uni. Yeah. It's, it's just like, like it's, it's a, like, yeah, it's weird, isn't it? They always, like, downplay yeah. it. Yeah, like, and it's like, I'm, I'm so working class. It's like, make your... Just be rich with your chest. Yeah, it's fine. Like, do what you want to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, sorry, going back to that, like, I never thought I'd live in London. Like, yeah. it's just that thing that like, you don't even think that it's a, mm. you know, possibility yeah. because it's not something that you've considered before. For sure. Which is fine. Yeah. So, of course, you're going to, you know, your career is going to change. And it's like, and there are new titles and new, you know, job ads every single day All like you know rise at seven have a vibes executive you know what i mean like what on earth is that well like, yeah. i love it like sign yeah, me yeah, up yeah, yeah. but like you know what i mean i'm here for vibes <laughs> imagine yeah. like, like yeah. the next yeah. the next job that you're in like i was in charge of the vibes yeah and that was my role 100%. and i love that like, yeah. I think that's so cool. The fact that, you know, companies are increasingly community focused. So the fact that, like, that's an entire role. Yeah. And that's the thing is, like, what, you know, what lesson are you going to do? Like, how's, like, Pythagoras going to help you with that? Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, and I know that's the usual one that people, sure. like, just sort of yeah. take the piss out of. And they do. They but do, yeah. it's, like, it's still a fair point. And of course you're not going to know what you're going to do when you go to uni, when you like yeah yeah i feel like we're going back around so we, we have we have but you know that it's yeah. full circle moment um <laughs> talking actually of the sense of community obviously like vg we're a small agency yeah. there's 10 of us at the moment you know everyone's become really close i mean originally it started with friends so yeah. like, and it's kind of been an extension of that yeah. that's kind of how we brought you into yeah like, obviously she's got all the skills <laughs> <laughs> but you know like i mean we, we were essentially reaching out to our, ne- our, our contacts and our network yeah. to be like who's got the skills to fill in the yeah, yeah. and you know <laughs> you came in handy and yeah. like at that point but i would say like obviously i think a lot of us go kind of beyond our role mm-hmm. and beyond our everyday responsibilities yeah. and i think what you do great is like 
you create a real sense of culture within the company like I like to think that I'm sometimes the mum of the company, but when I'm away, <laughs> Harry is there. Yeah. <laughs> like the Not first that. time I met yeah. you was at the VG like one year birthday. Yeah. Harry comes in balloons, yeah. decorations, <laughs> cake in one hand. And I was like, I feel fine about being in Barcelona because Harry's got like <laughs> anyone else who comes in who can be well looked after. Oh. Some of them are like, guys, I love you, but you're useless. And so, <laughs> you know, there needs to be someone there, you know, that creates that sense of community. And I think you do that really well. And oh, it's okay. like a huge asset of having you here. Um, but to go kind of beyond that, um, I was hoping that you could maybe talk a little bit about the yearly fundraising that mm -hmm. you do on behalf of your dad yeah. who passed away a few years ago and yeah. kind of talk a little bit about that because we kind of all get involved with that as yeah. well like yeah. we have like Max's day yeah like, that is <laughs> so sweet so yeah. like yeah talk, talk to us a little bit about that yeah so I've only really started um sort of celebrating my dad's birthday in the last couple of years yeah um, first time that I actually celebrated you know Max's day um was when I was in Oxford and it was just a really sunny day it was like yeah. holiday and I was like you know what like I used to I used to get really um sort of sad whenever it's like my dad's birthday yeah. you know um whatever it was um and I just sort of had this moment where I was like I can I can you know mull over this and you know be sad or i can yes. make it into something to celebrate uh so we literally went down to the pub first time and just had a little cheers and it was really sweet it was just you know very wholesome vibes and last year i was like you know what that was really nice i want to step it up um i used to do fundraising in uni um, and yeah. i was the like fundraising and events person for my dance club which I loved. And we did um, a fundraising event in uni for the Christie Hospital, which right. is where my dad was treated. And um, I thought, you know what, I've done this before. I know how to contact charities. I know how to, you know, set up these events, literally like just give and takes 30 seconds. Yeah. To, like, yeah. you know, it's, it wasn't a big thing. And it just kind of, um, you know, I wanted to celebrate it with you guys because, you know, DeRay was there on the first. Yeah, um, the first you know, first one. It. So I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to book it into everyone's calendars, yeah. uh, make sure everyone gets the afternoon off, um, you know, bring some Prosecco into yeah. the office and just like cheers. Make it a celebration. Yeah, exactly. Because like you can mope around and be sad. And obviously there's a time for that. Like, you know, my dad died 12, no, 13 years ago now. Yeah. Um, you know, I spent more of, you know, my life like without him than I did. So it's, it's getting to that point now where it's like, well, I can, I'll, you know, yeah, something shit happened to me when I was 12 years old, or I can be like, well, let me do something about it then. Yeah. Let me like, For sure. you know what I mean? Like, and also like, it's kind of morbid, but this does end up, it's so, it becomes increasingly common as you get older. Like right. unfortunately, a lot of my friends have now, you know, experienced losing a parent as well. Yes. And it's, you know, well, it's yeah, shit. It's, it's part of life. Yeah, it? exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's something that nothing can really prepare you for. It's just kind of like, I think the best sort of description of it, um, it was actually from a lemony syndicate um, book. <laughs> and it's like, that. you know that. Wise, like, to be fair, yeah. like, they wise, they're wise. But... Yeah, and um, I remember reading it when I was, um, you know, in the first couple of months after he died. Um, and he described it as, um, you know, when you're going up, you know, a flight of stairs, yeah. you feel like there's, one more step than there is yeah. and your foot kind of falls and you're yeah. like yeah it's like that but it doesn't okay. really end right so you kind of like in this like limbo of mm. like well there's nothing i can do you know you know no, so it's yeah so i can either be sad or i can do something about it yeah and um yeah that was the sort of thinking um, I literally started with just giving. Yeah. I um, made a lot of QR codes to it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I laminated them. I used them as beer mats when we went to the pub. That is fantastic. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we just I put out a post on LinkedIn. It was just after Brighton SEO yeah, yeah. And you know, it got quite um, quite a nice response. I think just purely because my dad was genuinely a good bloke. Like he was a nice guy. Um, you know, even now I'll bump into people back at home and they'll mm. be like, oh, like your Max's daughter, yeah, like, oh, that's so it's nice. so lovely. Yeah, that's like a proper, like, kind of like legacy feel as well. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And basically, um, we 
the reason why I wanted to get the whole team involved um, is just because like, like Fiji, we don't call ourselves like a family, we call ourselves yeah. like a tribe. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. everyone cares about each other. Everyone's quite protective of each other. Definitely. Yeah. And I love that. And I just thought like, this is such a huge part of my life. It's yeah. such a huge defining thing for me. It's the reason why I'm quite independent. Um, but you know, everyone says I'm like the oldest, like 24 year old. Like, would be like, yeah, yeah I'm like wise spirit, beyond <laughs> spiritually. <laughs> yeah. I think when you like when you go something uh, go through something like that when you're young, like it does age you because suddenly you're like, oh, well, I mean, yeah, and you're you're dealing with a very it's a life changing event, yeah, in itself. And yeah, I think that exactly. What whatever that looks like always brings about a kind of other version. Yeah, of you. exactly. And I don't I don't think it's a bad thing. Like I yeah. genuinely think that I'm a better person because of it. So um, yeah, with with Max's day, basically, it's just like any other birthday party. Like I if you that. know, and you just have a and get some tunes on, you know, a bit of like eighties funk and soul. Amazing. And yeah, just actually like have a fun time. Yeah. And like, you know, we celebrated it last year and not a single person there knew my dad. Like not a single yes. person had met him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone was like, Yeah, he seems like vibes. Yeah, cheers to Max. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This and one's he, for Max. <laughs> Another one for Max. Yeah, <laughs> no, we know. We did about <laughs> Oh God, we drank so much wine that night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but I love it. Yeah, it's a beautiful way. And I'm 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 pretty sure that you would love to be remembered and celebrated in that way. Yeah. Not that I know him. But <laughs> you know, like I can imagine like it sounds weird to say, but if I were to pass away, that's how I would want people. Yeah, to, like, I wouldn't want people to always be crying. Like, obviously, yeah. you miss me. <laughs> yeah, in a thing. Come on, that. That. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think there's there's a lot of space for that, and I yeah. think you know when anyone you don't want other people to suffer for it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, so if you can channel that into another way, yeah, why not? yeah, exactly. So anyone listening yeah 26th of april mark yes. your calendars um literally it's it's just have a raise a toast yeah um and yeah that's that's basically max's day sure. um i always share out a just giving link yeah um, last which we'll year. also be sharing out you'll see that <laughs> across our socials <laughs> yeah it's um Last year we raised almost five hundred pounds, which amazing, I, incredible. It was way beyond the target, wasn't it? Yeah, I think we set the target at like two hundred, yeah. just because it was like a spur of the moment thing. You know, it was like, oh, it might as well set this up, and it just got such a great response. Um, and yeah, even like I've been meeting people who have not seen in a while, like, oh, you do Max's Day again? Yeah, this year. that is so and fun, I and it just that. becomes that event. Yeah, like. I, I eventually want it to turn into like a big event. I want it to be like you know, twenty-four hour charity, you know, fun yeah, thing. Yeah, and yeah. you know, I like the. I actually quite like the. You know, there are people that. Well, no one there knew my dad. Like, no yeah. one. But I just think it's such a great way to keep his memory alive. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Um, we're getting near the hour mark. Yes. So it's time for our game. Oh, God. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I've switched it up a little bit. I'm actually going to do the same game that I did with Lauren okay. a few episodes ago now. Uh, <laughs> check that one out. Yeah. <laughs> Link. Link. <laughs> Link in <bio. laughs> Um, but I think it's a good um, occasion to get to know you even better. Okay. Um, and it, I think, especially because we've spoken a lot about like culture and stuff, it's it will be great to get your references. Okay. You. Okay. So I'm essentially it's very easy. I'm going to give you a category. Mm -hmm. You're going to give me your top three. Okay. For, from that category. I like it. Okay. Let's go. Nice. Right. So the first one we're starting off with is food. So Ooh. you can go by like cuisines if you want, or if you really want to like niche down, like literally the food itself. Okay. Oof. Top three favorite food. Yeah. Okay. So my boyfriend takes the piss out of me because every time I order an Indian, I love um, like South Indian and Sri Lankan food. Okay. Um, yeah. Every single time I order a taco doll okay. and mushroom rice, and Delicious. it's 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 lush. 
<laughs> that's really needs to be. Give yourself a top spot. Yeah, it's, honestly, I could eat it all day, every day. Like, yeah, just eat cheesy because it's just always the same thing. Yeah, I don't even look at the menu. <laughs> I'll have a number thirty-five and number fifty-one. <laughs> honestly, it's so embarrassing. Yeah. Um, that and that and a paratha, you can't go wrong. Oh, um, unreal. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, ooh, Thai probably. Yeah. Um, ooh, what else? Nice See, one. yeah, Italian, but only when I make it because if controversial for the Italians, I know. Saying. But the thing <laughs> is, is that the Italians love dairy, and I can that eat is dairy. True. That's true. So, yes. uh, yeah, I have to make it myself. That's true. That's so, fair. That's yeah. fair. Acceptable. <laughs> um, what are your top three films? Oh, that is a horrible question. I know. Um. I know. Ghost with Patrick Swayze. Okay. Yeah. Unbelievable film. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I definitely feel like I was born in the wrong decade. <laughs> There's like an 80s theme. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's the movies that I used to watch yeah. with my dad when I was little. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Ghost with Patrick Swayze. Unbelievable. Um, ooh. Um, Do you have a genre, a go to genre that you're really into? Oh, I think I genuinely have terrible taste in, <laughs> in like movies, in music. Yeah. I will hold my hands up and be like, I've probably never watched it. Yeah. Like, I've not watched any of the cool classics. I've right. not watched Pulp Fiction. I've not watched. Do you know watched... what? I only re recently watched that. Okay, that makes me feel so, better. <laughs> I'm terrible in that sense as well. Okay, yeah. good. I give I give the the impression that I'm a novel culture. Yeah. <laughs> like, I am. And if people are always a bit like, Okay, didn't see that one coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it. I guess another top spot would have to be How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days. That one is honestly. Do you know what? I actually watched this recently. Yeah. And I think as rom coms from that era, really forward thinking. Yeah. Because so many rom coms, we're talking early two thousands, <laughs> right? Yeah. So many of them. You watch them back now, and you're just like. I'm not gonna lie, this woman is useless. I know it's not very like feminist or like pro woman of me, but like honestly, she is useless. Like, yeah, get up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, it's like this, this man is treating me like trash. Yeah, like, trash. yeah, yeah. And it's like, and it's so weird to think that when we used to watch something, we like we pine over that, and like, yeah. we're just like, like, this is what great love is, is all like whatever it is. This is what I want. But then how to lose a guy in 10 days like yeah. flipped the script Unreal. on it. And so yeah, I'm with you on that one. Yeah. One. And it shows because it like recently it was just all over yeah. everywhere. everywhere yeah, it had a, it had a bit of a comeback, hasn't yeah. it? But I think for those very reasons that yeah. people are like, I want a classic rom com because they're hard to come by these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, but if I rewatch some of the classics, it's painful to watch. Like yeah. there are some films that I thought were my favorite. I yeah. watch them again. I'm like, I can't watch it again. Honestly, well, I stop. Like, have you ever seen um, What's Your Number? It's got Chris Evans and Anna yes. Harris. Horrific. Awful film. Honestly, <laughs> 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 because they spent yeah. the whole film being like, um, you know, if you're sexually promiscuous, like, what yeah, the fuck, who cares? I mean, so many rom coms. The slut shaming. Oh know, my no, god, no. unbelievable. Yeah. And then in like the last five minutes, it just undoes the entire thing. And they've got such a fascination of the fact yeah. that like, ooh, she slept with 20 people. Yeah, it like, is. Like, it's like, get a fucking grip. Like, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, But yeah, sorry, tangent again. Not and then, good. so, House of Guy in 10 Days, Ghost, and, oh god. <laughs> this is such a hard question. I actually watched, um, not that this is one of my favourite films, but I watched The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, you know, the new Nick Cage film. Oh no, I haven't. And they had this exact same, um, they had this exact same question. No. There. And <laughs> the third one, they were like Paddington 2. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. yeah. Well, I can't think of a third one, we'll so yeah, Paddington 2, I guess. <laughs> Um, okay, this might be a hard one for you. Mm -hmm. Top three books. Oof, okay. Um, Frankenstein, Mary Shelley. Yes. Um, You're very consistent with that one, actually. Yeah. 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 Um, I love that. I think both versions, the 1818 version and the 1832 version, are wonderful. Um, the 1832 is better written, but okay. the 18. 
18 is a lot more sort of visceral. Right. Um, oh, I mean, Frankenstein's just it's there. unreal. Yeah. yeah. Um, a book that got me through a really hard time was uh, Where Rainbows End by okay. Cecilia Return. Um, it's now been turned into the film Love Rosie. Oh, um, have I seen? I think I have seen that. Is, is that it, is Lily one of my Collins? top films. Um, it's Sam, yeah, yeah, Lily Collins and yeah. Sam Bathman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. One of my favorite films, actually, probably top five. I don't think yeah. it's oh, quite up okay. there with Paddington okay. Two. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, where Rainbows End, that one really helped me out. Mm. Um, I think it was just quite an escapism book yeah. at the time. Um, very holiday read, fluffy read. I love You're not holiday cry. read, though. Yeah, I love a holiday read. Um, and ooh, some third one. I feel like I want to say Wuthering Heights, but purely not in a romantic way yeah. because everyone romanticizes it. I think purely because it's it is uncomfortable and it's meant to be uncomfortable. Yeah. You're not supposed to support the main. You're not supposed to yeah. love people. Uh, you're not supposed no. to romanticize yeah, it, yeah, yeah. even if Tom Hardy in the ITV version is. No. <laughs> 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 Women of appreciation. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, anything with Tom Hardy in it, I'm there. Yeah, yeah. I look at much better than Honestly, worth watching. I mean, I think those movies are crap, but like Tom Hardy's in it, so I don't really care. Um, but yeah, you're. I don't think you're supposed to like. It's supposed to be unsettling. Yeah. It's supposed to be uncomfortable. It's a shocking yeah. book when it came out. Yeah. Um, you know, Emily Bronte wrote an underneath a, a pseudonym. Yeah, because she did. Bronte she originally published it as a man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ellis Bell. Yeah. I think, don't fact check me. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's, I like how uncomfortable it is. Mm. Um, that, oh, and the picture of Dorian Gray is very good as well. Okay, um, nice. I yeah. love that. Um, we're going to end it there. Um, thank you so much, Harriet. I really, this was really fun. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. We no. finally made it. I'm not gonna lie. This this recording has been rescheduled a stupid amount of time. So. Yeah, but that was spot on both of us. Yes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It was busy schedule. So it was. Yeah. Um, and obviously, music is always better in person. Yeah. So exactly. When I'm here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone had enjoyed. I'm not gonna lie. I had loads of other questions, but. We just didn't have the time. Yeah, sorry, so I, I guess that's for the next season. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. For right. part two. <laughs> exactly. This is part one. Um, thank you so much to all our listeners and viewers, wherever you are. I said consuming this podcast for another episode, and I was like, can I say consuming? But I, I guess. Yeah, consuming the podcast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wherever you're enjoying this, I hope you've enjoyed it. <laughs> that is what I'm trying to say. Um, make sure you look out for our upcoming episodes um, by looking up through all of our social media. So that's at viaductgen on Instagram, at viaduct underscore gen on Twitter, viaduct generation on LinkedIn and on YouTube. Uh, thank you so much again. I hope it's been a fun hour and well, I'll speak to you first soon. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs>